Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Beating the Winter Blues. I'm really excited that so many of you are able to join us today. Um, I heard a saying the other day, it was along the lines of it's hard to pour from an empty glass. So it's exciting to see a lot of people that work with clients throughout the UP here on today's webinar to learn a little bit about kind of taking some time for you um, and, and thinking about ways that you can get through the rest of this kind of yucky part of the season. So a little bit about us um, here at Grow and Lead. We strengthen nonprofits and promote positive youth development. Um, and so one of the ways that we kind of do both of these things is through our webinar series, which you're on today. So thank you for joining us. Um, we believe that the UP can be a model community for youth when we have strong, strong nonprofits and um, have people engaging in positive youth development. We also have a membership program, so if you're interested in getting more trainings, learning from your peers, um, getting some consulting with our staff, be sure to check that out. Um, membership information is available on our website. And I'd like to introduce you now to our presenter, Karen Wolf. Karen is an associate here at Grow and Lead. Karen, welcome. Thanks, Victoria. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Here we are in midwinter. Though he's been gone almost 30 years, my Grandpa George's words are echoed by my sister every year. When January ends, winter's back is broken. In the UP, though, it goes a little bit longer. We have reached the halfway point in February, though, and um, so that's a good sign. Even if you've slid into winter's rut after the holidays and football season, even if you feel like you never gained that New Year's momentum, fear not, there's still time. Winter is far from over, as we all know. However, after yesterday, we can definitely see some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to winter 2017-18. Just think, we'll be turning the clocks forward in three short weeks. Not sure why, but it does seem to make a difference. I think it's the long evenings of having some daylight to get some things done when you get home. So today we're going to look at the many ways to lighten up these remaining days of winter and to approach spring with a new perspective. I've listed some of the tried and true methods to infuse spring into our winter on this slide. I hope others will come to mind as we go along and invite you to share them in the comment box if you like, and Victoria can update us on those later. So not everyone is in a position to hop a plane and head for a beach on the other end of the country. But a weekend overnighter in Green Bay, downstate, or further south can break up the monotony. You can make it a special trip by visiting a museum or attending a concert, or consider staying at a water park hotel. Changing your perspective seems to clear out the cobwebs, and it's always good to get back home, even if winter is still hanging around. Exercise and outdoor activities are beneficial in more ways than I could cover in this half hour. Snowshoeing, skiing, skating, hiking, well, and then we've got some Olympic events like uh, snowboarding, which I have never attempted, but hopefully some of you have. And combining exercise with a visit to somewhere like the Ebon Ice Caves or Tequamanon Falls will make you feel as though you've taken a mini vacation. Go sledding with the kids. That's fun, but might want to wear a helmet. Cell phones allow pretty near everyone to become a photographer these days, and the UP subject matter is endless and changes with the seasons. Speaking of photography, winter is also a good time to go through old photographs and now SD cards. I have been sorting through my many photo albums, which date back to 1974. My mom is turning 80 this week, tomorrow actually, and she wanted pictures for a video for her party we're having on Saturday. 
going through these photo albums has been like reading a history book of my life. Um, I believe we all have new favorite digital photos we've taken this century that we've posted or shared, but haven't printed or saved anywhere special. And they're all just gonna get lost in the technology shuffle. I have been putting together some of those photo books through Walgreens or Shutterfly for special events. I've done a couple of those, but what I really wanna do now is start finding favorite pictures and do a book of all my insects and flowers or sunsets, uh, beaches, things like that. Um, yeah, I they're really great. They're not super expensive. If you watch for sales, it's a nice way to put them together. We all take a lot of pictures. Keeping track of them is the hard part. So winter is a good time to do it. And the same goes for family videos. These are modern day treasures and we don't wanna lose our memories. The picture in this slide is from my office. My orchid has been blooming for about five or six weeks again, and it does add life to the room. So do the plants. Two of my coworkers received flowers last week, lucky ladies. The vibrant colors and shapes were a great reminder of warm sunny days, driving past lovely neighborhood gardens. Treat yourself and pick up a bouquet once a month for your desk at work or a nice spot in your home or bring a bouquet to a friend or loved one. The multiplier effect kicks in. You enjoy the flowers and the feeling that you get when you do something nice for someone and you get to share in their reaction. It's also a good time to start seedlings or plant an indoor herb garden. This is a great activity to share with children. When the first shoots pop out of the dirt and you see new life, spring seems much closer at hand. Terrariums have made a big comeback and you can add stones or shells to bring more of nature indoors. Getting enough sleep is critical this time of year. It impacts every aspect of your health, physical, mental, and emotional. And it can be your greatest defense against picking up that flu bug or nasty cold. Our minds need a rest from all of the information we process on a daily basis as well. Once the weather gets warm, like 40 degrees, all most of us youpers want to be is outside. I know my only realistic chance of digging into the clutter is to get on it right after the holidays. I start by going room to room, looking for the invisible things that get set somewhere they don't really belong, and over time they've blended into the counter or table or corner. I try to just put away one thing in every room. Consolidating items is another early step in the process. It feels so good to get things out of the house and to see new open areas. Things for the garbage pile are the easiest to get rid of and it makes for the quickest progress. The same holds true for giveaways. Anything going to recycling or secondhand shops can be taken right to the car. Decluttering really needs to be done in steps. Keep expectations low. There will be roadblocks. Indecision, what, what do I want to keep? How, where do I get rid of this? Electronics can be a bugger. Do your research before you start driving around getting frustrated. The resale shops have criteria on what they will not accept. My ultimate goal is to know exactly what I have where it's located, and to have access to it. This is also a good time. Uh, it gives us a chance to consider special items we have that should be kept in the family and to note it somewhere or give it to the person now. My niece was visiting from New Orleans a couple of years ago, and I asked her if there was anything of mine she really loved and remembered from her childhood that she would like. And she mentioned one of my favorite things, a stained glass kaleidoscope, but I did give it to her. I loved it, but I had enjoyed it for decades. And um, 
she was really, I was happy that she could enjoy it now. Uh, when I mention games, I mean face-to-face -face games, board games, dice, cards, charades. A game night with family and or friends can make such a difference during these long, cold months. If you are a loner, you may prefer puzzles, jigsaw, crossword, whatever you like. If you are a more social type, consider a themed party. Uh, we're already done with Groundhog Day, traditionally a big party day, and Valentine's Day, but St. Patrick's Day is only a month away. Consider a costume party or tea party. Think outside the box on this one. Another way of socializing is to volunteer for an upcoming event or by visiting someone who is unable to get out much. Keeping your sense of humor will definitely make late winter more bearable. Hang out with people that you laugh with. Watch a funny movie or a stand-up comedian's routine. Challenge yourself to find the humor in the latest snowfall or in wearing boots again. Call someone you know who lives in a warm climate. It gives them a chance to tease you and it gives you a chance to brag about how tough youpers are. Incorporating these behaviors can make them part of your year-round routine, and you'll have to come up with some new ideas for next year. There have never been more opportunities to try something new than there are now. Between YouTube and the internet, you can learn more about how to do just about anything. A girlfriend of mine and I were having lunch yesterday, and she was a little upset with her husband over a needed thermostat in her SUV. Well, she made the declaration of, I'll just do it myself, and looked it up on YouTube, how to install a vehicle thermo uh, thermostat, and found out it was much tougher, even with the video, than she thought. So uh, keep your expectations in check a little bit. But it's great to consider trying a new hobby. Learn woodworking, take up a musical instrument, write a song. This is the time of year to do it. Give watercolor painting a try, draw and write your own cartoons, or take a class at your local craft store. Resurrect an old hobby, even if it's just for enjoyment. They still make paint by number kits, do you remember those? Think of things you loved to do as a kid. Revive one of the old arts. Weave a basket, embroider or sew. I believe they still make model airplane and car kits. I didn't have any brothers and I always wanted to try making one of those model cars. Try to step back in time and think about things you maybe only got to do once or twice. One thing I remember enjoying immensely was scavenger hunts. I only remember participating maybe once a year at a family picnic or Girl Scout event. Organizing one for kids or adults could be a lot of fun, and this could be an indoor and or outdoor activity. Get creative, have them find things in nature. Uh, another thing that is just always good any time of year, but I think in winter especially, listen to your favorite music, don't forget to dance and sing. It's good for the body and soul. It feels weird at first, but when the right music plays, the body starts moving and you really should just go with it. Speaking of getting creative, test your writing skills. Short stories, memoirs, keep a journal, write a kid's book or poetry. Use your imagination. Both my grandmother and mother put together little books with stories from each decade they had lived through for their grandchildren. Read, blogs, books, magazines, online articles. Learn more about each other. Set aside time for storytelling. Give each person a chance to tell a story in third person about anything they wish. Write a letter or send a card to a loved one. Snail mail especially something personal, has become a novelty. I know our younger generations seem to treasure a handwritten letter. 
It's an old fashioned way to connect, but there's something special about the handwriting or printing and holding something in your hands versus a message on your phone or computer screen. Yes, I definitely fall into the throwback category. Take an online class. I listed two of the most popular websites that offer free classes. If you want to learn something new and aren't concerned about the formal credits, this is an amazing way to do it. Contributors to edX include Harvard, Berkeley, MIT, Georgetown, the Sorbonne, and many others. What would you like to learn more about? You have to become interested before you can become interesting. Interested in others, certainly, but also interested in yourself. Do you recognize any of these places? Remember to look around your own hometown or places nearby. In Marquette, some of the things you can do to break up winter's monotony that don't cost a thing include visiting the DeVos Art Museum or Peter White Public Library. Take a walk or drive through Lake and Linland. For a modest fee, you can create something for yourself or someone else at the hot plate. Or you can conspire, play detective at Escape Marquette. Take a look at a UP map and plan a day trip. There are unique places to visit from end to end offering rich history and breathtaking natural beauty. That sounds like a tourism commercial, but it's the truth. Attend events. This weekend offers the UP 200 dog sled race, ice climbing in Munising, and a winter carnival in Grand Marais. I'm sad to say I have never ventured to the Keweenaw for the ice sculptures. It is on my bucket list. Self-care is needed more than ever this time of year. In addition to exercise, rest, and getting outdoors, eating healthy has a huge impact on your physical health and feeling of well-being. Though a hot hearty sandwich may sound better than a salad, there are benefits to choosing the salad or a bowl of soup. Fresh fruits and vegetables add color and flavors that make us think of summer. Your body uses fats to facilitate the absorption of vitamins A, E, K, and D. Vitamin deficiencies, particularly vitamin D, can contribute to depression and damage your health. Sunlight aids in vitamin D absorption, but most individuals get less sun when the temperatures drop. Healthy fats to add to your diet include fish, nuts, nut butters, olives, avocados, and tofu. Some of the best choices for complex carbs include whole grain breads and pastas, brown rice, beans, and whole oats. You can become dehydrated just as easily in cold temperatures as you do in warm weather. To combat winter de dehydration, a cup of warm tea is an excellent choice. Drinking tea counts towards a healthy daily intake of eight, eight ounce glasses of water. Ginger tea is a particularly good option as the spice naturally warms your body. If you do not enjoy ginger tea, any spice tea is a good substitute. Hot cider is another comforting, hydrating choice during cold temperatures. I have included a couple of links on the slide that um, articles that are related to self-care and combating the winter blues mentally and emotionally. And I hope you get a chance to check those out too. Winter wellness in the workplace. There is a big difference between juggling and balance. In 2018, we seem to be striving to find that balance while tossing balls into the air. Finding the passion and focus to give your best to your job can be difficult any time of year. We constantly try to balance family, friends, personal interests, chores at home, errands, yada, yada, with work, and often feel as though we come up short. Many of the things included earlier in the webinar can apply to work as well as your personal life. 
Rearrange items in your office or on your desk. Bring in a new plant or colorful picture or pillow to brighten up the area where you spend a good deal of your time. Family or favorite photos help with the balance and feeling centered. An old fashioned cork bulletin board is ideal for postcards, notes, quotes, and so forth. Anything that makes you feel happy when you look at it. And it shows others who you are and what's important to you. Declutter one area or drawer every week. Clean out your email. Even though it's just information out in cyberspace, I feel a low level of anxiety and a responsibility to get rid of things I'm not using and or that I don't need. If time and priorities allow for it, attend webinars, read blogs, and learn more about different aspects of your job. Plan an event for spring or try a new recipe and bring it in for your coworkers. Organize a giving effort for a local charity. Here at GLCYD, we have raised money for United Way the last few years in November, December by participating in different fun days and ways. One day you can wear a hat, you contribute a dollar. Sorry about that. You wear your favorite team apparel, contribute a dollar. The husband of one of our staff members brought in a warm blueberry pie and staff donated $5 per piece. Poker hands, dollar per card, best hand at the end of the week. We have exceeded our goals and have decided to schedule these giving weeks once a month throughout the year versus November, December when so much is going on. Efficient, and we'll probably raise more money this year. It boosts everyone's spirits and adds camaraderie to the mix. I have made an effort to do lunch once a month with someone I originally met through work who has also become a friend. It's not always the same person, just someone with a work connection who I enjoy and want to get to know better. Deepen the connections with your coworkers. You spend a lot of time together, and if there's a sense of trust and respect within your organization, all will benefit, including the organization itself. The blending of work and personal time has become a hot topic in our technology age. This makes it more important than ever to choose what we are giving our attention to versus letting notifications from email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, drive our time and thoughts. Try setting specific times throughout the day to check your email, not just reacting every time something flashes or beeps. The interruptions and distractions contribute to a sense of not giving your best to anything. Try to be considerate of other time, people's time and personal lives as well. Both are extremely important in creating and maintaining a positive work environment. And be forgiving of your coworkers, family, family members, strangers, yourself. The quicker you can forgive a slight or negative behavior, the quicker you can let it go and focus on something that can make your life easier and happier. Some of you may have read The Happy Healthy Nonprofit by Beth Cantor and Eliza Sherman. I just attended a webinar and Beth was one of the co-hosts. If you want to pursue more information on self-care and how it relates to your nonprofit work, I recommend you check out the link on this slide. The website has a free downloadable self-care plan and checklist, a nonprofit burnout assessment, and instructions for writing a self-care plan for you or your employees. And that's good any time of year. Victoria has been wonderful about sharing interesting ideas and information with me for this webinar, as well as many other things. Energetic millennials are a wealth of knowledge and are more than willing to teach an old dog baby boomer new tricks to help them appear savvy. She introduced me to two new words. I'm still not 100% on correct way to pronounce either one of them. 
I have li listed some of the similarities and differences. The Scottish word kozsagok refers more to the space and sense of warmth and comfort after working or playing outside. Huga is more about creating that comfort zone and maintaining it. Ways to enjoy winter. This subject is very trendy, and I encourage you to Google and research these further and learn a little bit about some European cultures in 2018. It's all about learning after all. Before I bid you adieu this morning, I think the best advice I can share is to interact with young people as much as you can any time of year. I just turned 57, and I'm pretty certain there's less time ahead of me than behind me. So sharing in their perspective keeps me tuned into now, and there is so much to learn from them. Remember how you felt at 18 when you talked to people older than you? Find that reciprocal appreciation of shared experiences. You have a lot to offer and so do they. I hope the last half hour has changed your perspective toward the next couple months and finds you ready to embrace spring to the fullest. Thank you for your time this morning. So, and I think we've got about three minutes if um, anyone wants to share anything. Victoria, you have the comment section. I do. I don't see anything in the comment section yet, but you're welcome to write in any ideas you have um, or things that you personally do to help beat the winter blues. Um, and while we wait for that, I will share something that I've been doing. So Karen mentioned reading, and then she also mentioned the actual book I'm reading, The Healthy, Happy Nonprofit. Um, and I have tried to start my day with 10 minutes of reading um, in the office when I first get here, um, sitting down and just spending a little time reading that book as a way to get focused and um, not stress out in the morning before my day starts. So that's something that I've been trying recently. And it's really gotten me to focus on reading because it's something that I say I often want to do, but don't. Um, I bought this book on Prime Day, which was what, like four or five months ago? And it had sat unopened until last week. So clearing that time in my schedule to kind of get grounded and ready for the day has been a really fun way to kick off, um, kick off my day. I love that, Victoria. I didn't know you were doing that. And I do have that. I'm going to try that one. I like that a lot. And it's quiet early in the morning. It is a good chance to do it. Yeah. So anyone else? I know there's got to be things I haven't thought of. Um, Mary sent you an email about an event flyer. Uh, so we'll be able to check that, Mary. And we can even send that out to everyone that attended today. Um, we'll also be sending out the recording and the slides and the links that Karen referenced in the PowerPoint. So you'll be able to check those out. Um, it normally takes a couple hours for me to get the recording up on YouTube. So later this afternoon, you'll be receiving both the slides and the recording and a short um, evaluation that we would love it if you filled out so you can help us come up with ideas for new webinars. We do a webinar every month and this topic was one that was actually uh, came from a survey. So be sure to fill out your survey. We definitely read all of them and take your suggestions to heart and try to plan our content around what our community is looking for. Besides that, I still don't see anything coming through. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for attending yes. today. Thanks so much, and thanks, Spring. <laughs> Have a great day.